Hello YouTube, it's Keith Kevin Ken. How you doing? On time today. <laughs> Unless something crazy happens and it's been happening around this apartment lately. Uh, <laughs> I should be uploading this by 11 o'clock and we're back on schedule. I'm happy you guys had a chance to see the video yesterday. Um, again, Monday through Friday, trying to get these up. Uh, before 11 o'clock, before I run out to work. A lot of people say, man, you start work at 11. Actually, I start work early in the morning. <laughs> Feels like I never stop working. But yes, I go in at around 11 o'clock. And I always say late because that's what it is. It's, it's late. Let's talk about the pocket dump deconstruction. <laughs> Look in front of you. I told you I was going to get two... Actually, I have four customs in two days. I'm I'm overwhelmed, actually. Um, I'm just overwhelmed. So, <laughs> remember, I got a, a surprise bonus. That's great news. I have a great job. Um, and instead of putting it away in my Sportsmobile fund, Sportsmobile, by the way, if you guys want to check one out on YouTube, they don't sponsor this, obviously. It's just a, a off-road... Um, van that you can live in with a pop-up top and everything that's what i'm talking about that's my kind of <laughs> my kind of retirement is going all around the country making videos for you guys cigar videos from the best cigar shops knife shops whatever um that's a dream of mine it may never happen but you gotta have a dream right isn't that funny? All my life, my dream was to do the job I'm doing now, uh, and I'm doing it now. My new dream is not to do the job, to go around taking pictures. That's why we have a new camera. I'm working on the new camera. We are going to have beautiful videos of the Spydeco dump. I can do those quick, fast, and easy on my iPhone, which is quick, fast, and easy like I did last time, but I want to make them nice. Uh, it won't have a lot of editing. It will be just like these, except uh, the camera and the lens will be beautiful. Um, and we'll be able to get real close-up shots of the knives and that sort of thing, which I really want to do this time around. So that's coming up soonish, soonish. In fact, what I'm saying is I'm not going to be laying on that couch this weekend. Uh, I played with it this morning, got it all out and set up. It's just different. It's not... It's not... Uh, new math. It's just new routines that I'm not used to. So we'll get to that, okay? But regardless of what I'm doing in the back uh, of the house, we will continue to do the daily pocket dump deconstructions. The plan is then we'll do, um, I have a lot of first impressions of new knives that I'd want to do for you guys. I also have these, the, the Spydeco Palooza, because we are over 1,000, over 1,000, thank you. And so what we'll do is, you'll start seeing a series of two videos. One in the morning, that's the pocket dump deconstruction. One in the later afternoon, evening, and that will be the uh, Spydeco Palooza. I don't know how, how many it'll take to go through it, but we're going to go through it and we're going to use that new uh, camera to do it. So I'm excited about it. Okay, let's talk about this though. This is the pocket dump deconstruction. Yeah, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of uh, two of my uh, new customs uh, knives in this. One I'm carrying today. I'm actually carrying a custom. I don't know. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it really is. Um, and then it's the knife that got away is a, a beast of a custom as well. So let's do this thing. I'm carrying my uh, uh, Rolex Date Just. Just a nice classy carry today. I have, um, I'm going to be smoking at the end of the day. I'm going to be smoking um, a Ramon... Alones, uh, just a wonderful Cuban cigar. I love that cigar. It's all about the blended scotch, not the expensive kind, but the good kind. Just a nice everyday blended scotch. I'll be drinking that with my cigar later tonight. 
And then this shown pin, this is a stainless steel shown pin with DLC coating, diamond-like coating. That's DLC, just really nice. I thought it'd go well with the carry today. Yeah, that is a vintage Mont Blanc thin wallet. And the uh, coin today, let's see. Give it some shade here, make it out. That is um, the year of the dragon. My one of my China, let me see something. Yep, that's it. Year of the dragon. One of my Chinese lunar year coins from 2012. Let's get the knives off. I like this carry, man. I, I've been <laughs> I've been coming up with different variations, and I'm liking each and every one of them. I'll tell you, I really like this one. Oh, it looks good. It feels good in the hands. It just makes me happy. Makes me happy. Um, <laughs> my keychain knife is the Spidacle Sparehead. I'll tell you guys, this is a really nice knife. You don't hear people talk about it much. I all obviously talk about the uh, Spidacle Tag. I love those uh, knives as one of my keychain knives. You can also wear it around your neck. This is another one of those. The thing about the tag knives, first, I love Serge Bachenko, but, uh, and so, in fact, I'm hoping in a couple of days I'll have a new uh, coin claw knife from him. Um, but the great thing, those are all slip joint knives, which are fine. You put your finger in the spidey hole and it, it'll, it does you well. This one is even more unique. It's the Spidico Square Head. Again, it's about the size of a dog tag. You can wear it around your neck. I wear it on my keychain. And again, great materials. S30V steel, B blasted, just really nice. 1.3 inch blade, all titanium here. And the interesting thing about this, the big difference between this and the other tags, listen. Yeah, that's the lock. They call it a liner lock. I call it a back lock. I guess you could even call it a frame lock. <laughs> but what a wonderful knife. It locks up for you. It's just really a handy knife. Whenever I use this, it gets a lot of use. It just cuts everything open. From an envelope to a box <laughs> to a cigar, anything. Uh, very sharp. Again, S30V steel. It's a Spydeco square head 1.3 inch all titanium with that wonderful lock it's a real nice lock and a nice looking pivot actually it's funny on this small knife they have a better looking <laughs> pivot than they do on some of their regular knives don't they what a wonderful knife man i got inkosi fever i have to tell you i have inkosi fever from uh chris reeve Small and cozy fever. The large one, you know, I have the 25. I say this all the time. But, man, I can't wait. I almost pulled the trigger. <laughs> I almost pulled the trigger on a small and cozy. I am going to be buying a lot of small and cozies. Uh, I really am. Uh, because Chris Reeve looks like he's going to do all kinds of inlays to the Nkosis. And I want that. That and... Um, some small 21s, and also some uh, uh, Menundes. My guess is mostly in Kosi's and Menundes. You guys saw I just got a small 21 that had uh, uh, some new wood inlays on it. So I can't wait for the new wood inlays. I really can't. And, and I'm starting to fall in love with these smaller knives. Yes, I still like the standard 25s. The 21s, I've got a bunch of them, as you guys know. I need to do a new Chris Reeve, a complete Chris Reeve uh, video. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, maybe I'm asking too much, but I'm hoping if I'm going to do a complete Chris Reeve of the 61 knives that I have, folding knives, and I hope more to come. Same with Spydeco. Those are, Spydeco is my biggest collection, Chris Reeve second, Browse Blades third, and then I have a lot of other 
uh, knives. When I do that, I just want to do it nice. I want to be able to hold it up like this and have it in complete, wonderful focus and all of those things. Um, and so I'm going to do that, though, I promise you. Uh, I do have most of my Chris Rave knives in a collection. When we hit 500, I, I put up... Um, I put up the uh, uh, Pelican case 1550 and went through the entire case in three different videos. The first one and a half, so the first two have all of my Chris Reeve knives. So if you want to take a look at what that collection looks like, it's in a playlist here. So go check it out. That's the Nkosi. This is the Plain Jane Nkosi. It started off as the Nkosi. This was the first knife that Chris Reeve introduced as his new knife. And then, of course, he introduced the large Nkosi earlier this year, which made this the small Nkosi, which basically you have a new and improved uh, Sabenza 25, and, and now he's been able to introduce a new and improved one, and he's done something he didn't do with the 25. Now we have a small version. 2.8 inch blade, just about a tenth of an inch smaller, and it makes a difference. It feels good to me. If you don't like smaller knives, I get it, but man, just a little bit smaller than the small 21. I really adore that, that he did that. I really do. I love this knife. S35 VN steel, and this is, I have this one, and I have the knifeart.com exclusive. That's the number three, the third one made from Chris Reeve uh, with carbon fiber. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to more of them. Of course, I spent a lot of money on customs. On my, <laughs> my bonus. <laughs> yeah, I have the fever. I thought I was slowing down on the fever and then I just went crazy a little. Um, but that's the Nkosi. If you haven't picked up one... If you like the 25 or say you have a Sabenza 21 and you've always wanted a 25, yes, you'll hear people say, oh, the 25, you know, it's going out, collect your 25s. There are a, a lot of 25s out there. I actually have a 25 collection video on this channel, so go check it out. A lot of variations. I have a lot of them. Um, what you need to do, though, is go get an Nkosi. Go get a large uh, Nkosi. That is perfect for you. This is not a Chris Reeve knife. This is not a Sabenza or a Browse Blades or a Strider or anything. This is the custom from Tom, <laughs> Tom Mayo. This is a Mayo. I've always wanted a Mayo because I keep hearing everyone talking about it. And so when I had a chance to grab one, I grabbed one. This one is a new one from him. He, uh, you know, remember I talked to you about the G8, the um, gathering that happens every year in uh, Las Vegas. It's put on by the usual suspect network, the big knife network. Well, a lot of makers, if you're on Instagram and follow them, and I do, a lot of makers create knives just for that. Because, you know, USN, they're, they're the... A lot of custom fans uh, in the USN. And so all these makers make it out to Vegas. I really want to go one year with some money to buy. And they really make things just for that occasion because you have, I don't mean the cream of the crop of the collection uh, community, but kind of, you know, big knife uh, collection community. Tom Mayo created this one for that. We're talking about 2016. By the way, I didn't give the date. It's Wednesday, October 26, 2016. I don't want you to think that this is like a generic one that I'm doing. <laughs> okay? This is not a generic evergreen <laughs> pocket dump deconstruction. We're doing it Wednesday. It's hump day. Hope your hump is a small one. Ant heel instead of a mountain, right? October 26, 2016, I give you the date every day, although I almost forgot this time, I give you the date every single day so that you know that we do the pocket dump deconstruction every single day, every single day, yeah. 
This is a, uh, again, a Tom Mayo. There's a huge Tom Mayo collecting, not club, but uh, there probably are clubs too, but a lot of people collect Mayos. Expensive knife, this one again, a brand new one. I got it from Arizona Custom Knives. They got it directly from him uh, at the... Uh, <laughs> at the gathering in Vegas, and I went and I got it. I don't have a lot of information like I usually do. All I can tell you is this is wonderful titanium. It's handcrafted. I love it. I do like it. I have to admit, I told you guys, I had nothing. A lot of mine are mid-techs and production knives. I have nothing against customs. My goodness gracious, no. I have a generalist, the number nine generalist. I love customs. That one I got direct from the maker. My problem is I'm not gonna wait months. I hate waiting days for the shipment to come in or years. Some people are on two and, and four year wait list for customs. I'm not that guy. But I also have been telling you that lately you see a lot of customs on distributors sites that you can pick up in a lot of them directly from the place. So they're not even pre-owned. This is not pre-owned, buddy. This came right out of his hand. <laughs> I like this. At the G8, the gathering. I don't know what Damascus this is. They didn't tell me. If you guys can tell me which Damascus, please put it in the, uh, please put it in the comments section. I see this a lot on YouTube. I see a lot of people talking about their custom knives and some things are left out because you just don't know unless you have been talking uh, to the maker. Maybe I'll send a picture and try to email him. I don't. I know he's busy and important and I don't know him. I'm not a fancy YouTuber or collector, but I'll try to see what it is. Maybe he'll get a kick that someone owns this knife that he made just recently. But look at the... Oh, it's so nice. It almost looks like Ladder Damascus, but a funkier kind of Ladder Damascus, not as neat. Oh, man. Yes, it's a hawkbill blade, um, but, you know, it's it's a slight hawkbill. Trust me, when we go through the Spydacos, I've got a collection of hawkbill blades. You're going to see some real hawkbill blades, <laughs> okay? <laughs> But yes, this is a hog bill with that wonderful Damascus. Man, it feels so great in my hand. It's kind of, you know, you guys know, you've heard from me. Yesterday I carried my uh, Chris Reeve Sabenzas. I love this. There's nothing plain about this, obviously. One of his signatures are the holes in the scales. Again, see-through construction. Um... It is obviously a frame lock with the holes, which make it pretty light, nice to carry. I love that it's bead blasted too, because while it's expensive, I don't have a problem putting it in my pocket, you know? Um, but you guys know, this is almost, this is a custom, right? A very expensive knife, but it follows what I told you about yesterday in the pocket dump deconstruction. If you haven't seen it, they're all on playlists. We have over 165 uh, pocket dump deconstructions on this channel. But look, it is this nice, wonderful titanium. This gets me excited. And then look at the Damascus blade, you know? It's, it's just, ugh. If you're a Mayo fan, yeah, this is one I have. You don't have it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. You guys appreciate this a lot more than I do, and you know all the information. If you are one, um, leave in the comments for everyone to see what this Damascus is. But uh, this is the Tom Mayo Custom with the Hawkbill Blade, the, the uh, Damascus Hawkbill Blade, made for the gathering in uh, Vegas. I purchased this, purchased this from Arizona Custom Knives that got it directly from the maker. Oh man, it fits my hand just perfectly. I really love it. Oh, and I can't get enough. I know about the Spidey Ho. I can't get enough. You know, I started with Spidey so there's something that makes me happy. 
<laughs> with a whole opening. I know. I love, you know, I know I love flippers. In fact, the knife that got away, the custom that got away is one of the best flippers I've ever <laughs> used. But there's something for me that I like about that opening. There you have it. That's the carry. Got a custom. Got my Encinco. Oh, man. My Encosi. Why do I keep saying Encinco? Encosi. I keep getting the Encinco and Enco and whatever. That's the Encosi. Um, the small Encosi from Chris Reeve. See, it's kind of the same kind of carry, but man, a lot of different knives. And that that blade is about a three inch blade on the Mayo, so it's a nice smaller carry as well. Uh, I like it. And then top it off with the square head, we're talking titanium to get over the hump today. Yeah, a pocket full of titanium, that's it. That will be posted on my Instagram at Keith Kevin Ken at around noonish, oneish, or twoish. Hey, come follow me on Instagram. You would have seen photos of these yesterday. It's just easier to do the photos <laughs> before you do the video. I was so wiped out yesterday. I, I didn't even get a chance to do the video. Videos are coming on these knives pretty soon. That's the carry. That's the pocket dump deconstruction. Our goal. We reached our goal, our thousand goal. I'm working on the videos. I hope you enjoy them. We're going to go through the entire hundreds of knives of Spydeco. I'm still buying them. <laughs> so as I do this, it's increasing. Spydeco knives here on this channel, that is coming. I have a new uh, Canon 80D. Man, that bonus came right in time for us to do this channel, didn't it? Um, with a nice lens, so I, I want to make it nicer so that we can really examine these. You know, I love my Spydeco, so I want this collection to really be documented. Um, thumb it up. We made that goal, and I'm going to live up to my end of it. Our next goal is 2000 and I know we can get it. Share this video. Like it. Like it. Let me know that you want me to keep going. Hit that subscribe button. Over 60% of the people that watch aren't subscribed. Just hit it. It's free. Let's hit that 2,000. Once we get to the 2,000, I'm going to go over the case that holds all of my brouse blades, striders, hinderers, and um, custom knives, my uh, Pelican 1550. But I'll also get have a knife giveaway, either here or Instagram. I have to do it. I, sometimes on YouTube, I know it's real complicated and I don't want to get them upset. So maybe we'll do it on Instagram. But I will be giving away two knives, two Spydecos and really good Spydecos. One of them, they're brand new in the box. Uh, I have taken them out and put them in a Pelican case, but that's it. have not used them. Um, and because I, I have duplicates, one of them is a sprint run, a current sprint run of a big knife. You, you're going to like it. Trust me. So that's our goal for 2000. That's our carry. That's the uh, deconstruction. But before we go, hey, this is the Keith Kevin Ken YouTube channel. Oh, we can't go away without this. Ah. <sighs> Without the knife that got away. Why did it go away? I'm scared to put it in my pocket and have things rub against it. It's too big for my Chris Reeve. <laughs> it's too big for my Chris Reeve uh, sheath. Um, <laughs> this is the knife that when I go out uh, to friends and I want to show off, you might actually see me break my rule. One big knife and a keychain knife. But, oh, man, this is... I told you, two real famous guys, both knives came in yesterday. Talk about Christmas in October, huh? A Tom Mayo and then a Todd Begg. Oh. It's the Bodega 2.0 from Tom Begg. I know you've been seeing all of the different uh, mid techs from Tom, uh, from uh, Todd Begg. There are only a few all customs, but this is as close to custom as you can get, this one. <laughs> Let me just tell you, this is as close to custom as you can get. Some of the parts weren't made in his shop, but everything was, <laughs> was done in his shop to make this thing work 
really well. <sighs> I'm going to do a longer review of this, but needless to say, shiny titanium on the handle. Man, it flips so nice. Shiny titanium on the handle. It has stainless steel inserts, and then this is a laser print. They come up with a way to laser print etched in these murals, and then they number the murals. These are limited edition. Uh, this mural right here from this Todd bag, oh, you gotta love it. Come on, folks, is number 11. Shiny tie, stainless steel insert with this wonderful pattern. It is a very limited edition and as close to custom as you get these days. I'll tell you. It has all the things that you can expect from a bodega, especially one of this quality. The back space are just wonderful. Titanium. This diamond checkered kind of pattern. I'm going to do one with a good camera. You see the titanium here underneath. Oh, they have that crushed ice. <laughs> Uh, 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 titanium on the uh, uh, clip. It's his clip with the ceramic ball. His famous clip. Ugh. Oh, back here. This is my first bodega, folks. And man, it's a mega one. I love it. Um, fruit flies flying around here. Uh, you can see right here. You see these five screws? Well, the lower five, you can unscrew and replace the titanium lock bar. So you can just take this part off and get a replacement and put it back on while this is still holding together. I said it's the smoothest <laughs> because it's on ceramic <laughs> washers, but it's, it's IKBS. This is my first time. I mean, it's on ceramic ball bearings. This is my first time with an IKBS knife um, and oh, the bearings. It's unbelievable. So smooth, so wonderful. I mean, no effort at all. <sighs> this reminds me of when I was smoking cigars, when I started smoking cigars, and I finally had a Cohiba in my hand, you know, one of the best ones. And I went... Ah, because you kept hearing about it. On the mid-tech side, it's like when I first got my Chris Reeve knife, because everyone talked about the Chris Reeve knives, and I finally had one. Well, Todd Begg, you know, even his mid-techs, everyone says, is like customs, but this is as close to a custom as you can get. Limited edition. Oh, I love the pattern, too. Just a nasty pattern on it. <laughs> I just love that. Get the skull after she cut his, the head off. Um, the knife, 3.75 inch blade, N690 steel. This is the Todd Bag Bodega. This is the knife that got away. Bodega 2.0. It's number 11 with this mural on it. You don't see these around much, let alone get a chance to handle it. This is my first bodega and oh my goodness gracious. Talk about something you want your kids to have, too. Whew. Ah, grandkids. That's a beauty. I'm a happy knife guy. Ah. <laughs> Yesterday was a very good day. You guys have a perfect day. Keep those pockets full. Goodbye.